Hello there everybody and welcome to episode 1 of my Prestige 1 tutorial. This is the third mini-series in this playlist. In the first one we conquered the Pioneer difficulty, last one Viceroy, and today we're going to get started with a real Prestige run. So, before we get started though, I meant to go over the upgrade section to quickly cover what I personally deem the the mandatory upgrades that I personally wouldn't start prestige without. So first off, consumption control. This tool allows you to forbid certain basic foods and practically everything that should not be consumed right now. Real power tool, you can get so much value out of that. It is really, really good and it bothered me in the last episode already a lot to not have it. The next one here, also very, very mandatory, the additional blueprint choice. I want that immediately as this makes everything so much more reliable. If you have more choices, it is easier to prosper. So you also gain these base stat increases. So for example, here we gain a bit of uh, impatience growth reduction, which is really, really good, but really not what we're after mainly. The next thing that I want to introduce, trade routes. These are another victory mechanism even that I wouldn't want to start without and back there the additional cornerstone choice is really tasty but it is not as important as the neighborhood upgrade although here at this point well tastes might differ I personally um, prefer this because of two reasons the effect itself is really nice and it also allows you to use cornerstones that Give you hostility reduction. I just don't know if I have them unlocked on this level already. But either way, neighborhood upgrade is really powerful. Additional cornerstone choice though as well. So I find it a bit hard to decide here. I ideally start with both, but as you see here, my food stockpiles don't allow me to. So for the sake of the richness of the tutorial, I pick up the neighborhood upgrade, but a part of me prefers the cornerstone choice over the other one. Choose to your own liking. I find it very hard to weigh these. I'm picking this now because this gives me another very important thing to explain in the next run. All right, so we're heading back to the map and we're going to select our next caravan, or, oh no, city. So first up, we're picking up the Sumber Procession uh, event here. So honor the dead, we would gain 10 tools and 20 stone if we'd be opening not more than one dangerous glade. I'm not down. That is really, really uh, bothersome. And we are going to ignore that, or we could... Well, we don't have enough embarkation points, so we can't pick that outcome. These events, they are always... Uh, only once available, so this will disappear. I can choose it now if I'd wanted to. But... Uh, <laughs> This is really powerful, so we could pick it if we wanted to go for that, because this would be a bonus for all the uh, caravans in the following cycle. That's pretty powerful, but uh, we're not going to go for that, because I, I don't want to play a game where I have to do this, especially not a tutorial one. Now, I'm going to pick a third match now in the Royal Woodlands. We're going to explore the other biomes here too, promise. But uh, I want to... I think it's just the best way to show you the progression curve when you're watching this third video series you will notice the difference from episode one or series one two up to three the best if we're playing always the same pile all right let's get started first off we go down here to prestige one more reputation required and harder orders these are the two tackling uh, the, the two things that we need to tackle a prestige run is always a tad bit longer than a regular one so in this scenario it is very easy for me to choose the uh the caravan that i'd like this one is in my humble opinion somehow inferior I don't really get the appeal of that one. The randomization sometimes really makes the choice very easy, as here we get tools, even two more people, and beavers. What's not to like about that? Here we would have only eight people, a bit more food, but no, no, actually not. It's the same amount of food, and we get stone instead of tools. This is not weighed equally. <laughs> not at all. Now, we are picking up wood and i'm also picking up food it is perfectly fine though to go for a uh, distribution like that 
that's more building material heavy. I personally love to have more food as it makes me feel more flexible in my early game explorations. Now then, we are gonna get started here. There's nothing more to explain about the whereabouts here. We already know the Royal Woodlands biome quite well. The storm conditions don't change. That's the same or between Viceroy and Prestige, as you see here. The hostility scaling doesn't change. It's really more of the same, but with harder orders and more points to fulfill. And that does change a lot already. But I'm pretty uh, confident that we're gonna brave this too. All right, but before we start, a really, really important thing left is left to say. It is easier the more of these things we have unlocked, and don't fret to fail a bit. It's uh, it's really not bad to lose a match. I wouldn't mind if we'd be losing this tutorial episode here either, because sometimes R and Jesus is just not with you. That's really important to note. Anyways, let's get started. We get here a free cornerstone reroll for every reputation point gained during Drizzle season. That is amazing. We should totally time this wherever we can, because cornerstone rerolls are really powerful, allowing us more specialization in the colony. This is really good. So faint flame, less sacrificial effic efficiency, blight rot cysts when somebody leaves or dies, insatiable hunger well, the people have more chance to eat stuff in the storm and oh we have a hostility for coat tax so this is the first time that we have a tax effect we need to pay coats if this hostility level is on i've been talking about that in the previous episodes uh, on the viceroy season um so i'm really happy that we can teach it this here so Four more reputation points required to win, and the orders that we receive will be harder now. Okay, first of uh, things are same. We scout the environs. We have here a danger glade, here one. Oh, this is looking good. Here we can expand. We're going to use this. So, yeah, how the hell am I supposed to, do, to make all this happen just with one glade? The extra condition that we had on the previous square is really good to be played on a lower difficulty level. This would have been worth to scale down all the way to Pioneer or Settler just to get that bonus, just as a side thought. Now, we do the usual things that we always do. We now know where we want to expand towards to, so we go for the first two woodcutter camps. I hold down left shift to increase their priority so I can safely place down all the other work orders. But before we do anything foolish again, let's disable the coal as I fuel again. I, I did I did miss out on that in the Viceroy series. I'm very, very sorry about that. Uh, no, it's not a good spot for the houses. Houses should always be in a... Uh, in the least useful spots of your city because you're they're basically just decoration that offers housing i do like it that way don't get me wrong i think this is amazingly good as it allows us to build the houses where we need them or where we can so we can use that space efficiently all right woodcutter camps are online hold down lift shift to mark the avoid glades i'm holding down control and i'm just going wild here so there's two different takes here due to the holding down control we were excluding the borders of that one there's two different approaches for me in this regard here you could either rush for a dangerous glade in season one with 10 people perfectly doable or you just build up yourself in season in year one and uh, take it slow most of the time i prefer the take it slow approach as I personally think it is safer that way because you have a fallback mechanic. So our first cornerstone arrives and peasant supplies. So peasant supplies is just amazing. Well, exploration contract is also, but peasant supplies allows us to play with trade routes so decently as we will just receive provisions for every new person in town. That's one of my favorite uh, um, cornerstones to get. All right, let's see. As you see here, we have a lot, we have a wealth of selection here. This is so good. I am very, very much inclined to pick up the Carpenter, because planks, tools, and luxury goods are really excellent, but since we have a Trapper's Camp on the selection line, I don't. It's quite simple. If I find on the uh, next 
plate that I open, something that requires this camp, I'd be really inclined to pick it up, as these are really powerful. As you see here, trapper's camps provide a ton of food, and it might be really a smart roll to go for that. And apart from that, all the um, buildings that we could draft here will require materials that we don't have available right now, so you don't need to stress yourself out in any way. So, either delivery of copper bars for pipe production? That's a little bit too odd to me. We pick up the building materials as a plus one to planks production never hurts any colony. This is one of the hidden superstars of the perks that you can get from the orders, as it cuts down on wood consumption. And wood is that one resource that it's so good if you can lower your footprint in consumption there in some way. So I'll be voting for Lost in the Woods. Funding the expedition is also quite interesting as it would yield parts, but the extra production on basic materials that provide brick, it goes into a similar venue as the reinforced saw blades. And here, well, extra fabric production. <laughs> yeah, why not? I mean, extra grain production is also a very, very appealing reward. The human resolve is a very easily resolvable one. This one is a tad bit harder, but it is so much worth it. We're going to go for that one. There we go. All right, houses and all are being built. It's the usual trick. I think we can safely speed up the game a little bit because there is really nothing that I haven't explained in the previous series before. If this is all going too fast for you. There's the other series, tune in. There's everything explained there. So that's just what we are going to go for here. Okay, the houses are done. We are waiting for the decorations on the side to be completed. Tell you what, left shift priority uh, one there so the decorations get done before the paths get done. I just want it that way as this is an instant bump up on the uh, resolve of our folks. I personally love that. So fuel situation goes upwards and we have 20 coal on our pocket and we're easy and we're chilling and cleaving our way towards these areas here. I'm just opening the way so in year two we have a very very short way in, in getting things done. All right paths are done we have still three workers up and running so let's start the gatherers camps. There we go that's the first one and a flax field also quite nice. So we have fabric and food. We also have herbs on the side here Okay, I'm slowing down the game a little bit as we're now needing to build new stuff and I don't like idle hands. This is one of the things that I really try to avoid wherever I can. Idle workers are really not good for your city, especially in the early game. Later down the road it happens, sometimes people are unemployed, it's not that much of a big deal. But early on, try to keep them busy. And if you have that many workers because you have a 10 people start like I do here, it's totally fine to whip them through the building process. But as soon as the last building is finished, we should totally send them working somewhere. All right. So everything is set up. This uh, clearing is as used as it can be. We're going to go and go forth, pick them up the harvesters yeah. camp and I'm going into the crude workstation next. I'm leaving this one out. That's a particular reason behind that. I have to deliver crop packages. Crop packages are made, among many things, out of roots. So we would have an opportunity to uh, fulfill that quest if we fail to get any farming opportunity. So we have still quite some food to rely on early. And, well, we can't make ourselves reputation points like that. It's also worth checking out if you can bump somebody into happiness early on. Sometimes it works because you have a uh, supply of stuff like pickled goods. It's making, that's making you people happy from the get-go. Alright, everything's uh, done. 
we have no idle hands. The only thing that I'm not happy with is that we don't have limits on these. I love me my limiters on the on the crude workstation, as it is such an inefficient and horrible place to spend your resource on. I just like to just uh, keep it on the down low. All right, so we can now safely move forward on triple speed. There's nothing we are missing out here. This place is producing source for us, and obviously we also have a side production of a little bit of clay and even a little bit of insect. So my food stockpiles are, as a matter of fact, not even going down because the uh, woodcutters are sometimes finding some egg and we are obviously scraping by quite decently like that. Excellent. So as you see here, there was enough time open that we could have easily opened up one of these glades and attacked one of the uh, events there. This is perfectly fine, perfectly fine rush strategy. But we'll be doing that later down the road when I'm doing other biome explanations. Because I plan to do the next mini-series to start explaining the other biomes. I hope you guys will like that. So this storm, it's basically like it's not, not a storm at all. We uh, just chopping the trees here. And tell you what, we might be even opening a glade here during the storm. Let's do this, why not? I think we're going to uh, benefit from that. At this point, this is just uh, really, really excellent for us, as it will give us a preview about the things that we are up to do. We can finally know what we'll be drafting, and if we need any materials to resolve the crisis on the clearing, we can build a trading post to invite the trader when the next drizzle season hits town. That's just as good as it can be. And as you see here, they're even requiring the remainder of the storm season to open up the blade, so... Perfect timing. There goes. So, what do we have here? An altar of decay? A tool shop? So, you can, by the way, find on these clearings workshops that you regularly don't have access to. The tool shop, for, ex uh, for example, I think we can't... Uh, we, yeah, here. Unlocked at level 9. This is really cool, as this opens up options that you're usually not having. So what do we have here? The Altar of Decay. We can either tear it down or we can perform a ritual. That ritual will kill a person. <laughs> Alright. But we'd gain... A hostility reduction whenever people leave town. So that's a new one for me. I didn't know that yet. So uh, I think it's safe to say that we are better off burning that thing down. And here you see again, that's the reason why I don't burn my starting coal. It is such an excellent crisis resolver early on. Doing the trick every single freaking time. So here it's a bit difficult for me, but I'm picking this slower package. It would be really nice to have three people, but this speeds up our progress a lot. Why? We don't have any... Uh, stonecutters camps or anything running right now so it'll be an easy way out to just order this thing to get investigated now so burning blight rod cysts is harder and there is a heavy hostility increase for wildfire essences in the warehouse so there's a little bit of a workaround here that you can go for let's see if you have enough territory that is so, yeah, here it goes. We are unable to build the small hearth, but somebody will just plot, uh, dump down the uh, extra wildfire essence into the uh, work site at some point. Ah, we don't have workers right now. Give me a sec. Let's unemploy one of them harvesters so I can demonstrate it decently. And that will lead to a drop in hostility reduction because it's only counting the ones in your warehouse. Sometimes really, really good. So, rebellious spirit versus protected trade. So, that's a, tif that's a really difficult one for me. Rebellious spirit is an excellent cornerstone. 
it's only bad if you have people dying and in the lower difficulty levels it's really easy to keep people most of the time alive like 90 to 95 percent of your population it's not a big deal so even if somebody would die it's not the end of the world this extra global resolve bonus is amazing as you gain quickly like five points out of that the other point here the protected trade though is also really really good and we're going to pick it this time as we have trade routes unlocked we have provision packs enabled we are going to go for a trade victory of sorts or at least we're going to make our gameplay more powerful with the help of trading that's uh, something I haven't done yet in the previous runs, so it's going to be excellent to demonstrate that here. So we have a clay deposit. It's wonderful. And we have fertile soil. So draft-wise, a couple of things are now a lot clearer. Oh, ooh. we even have that little root mother here. Now, we now know that we don't need the Traverse Camp. We don't have anything in our utmost vicinity that utilizes that. And the interesting part here was the carpenter is now also not the best choice. We don't need some place to create tools at. We have a much better place for that. We are going to re-enable that tool shop and wonderful, we got that. I mean, it was it's also kind of tempting to dis disassemble that thing. So it wouldn't have been a really horrible choice to have drafted the carpenter. But in that situation, heck, we can just pick up the lumber mill and we get the best of both worlds. All right, at this point, small farm plantation. These are the superstars here. It's really, really easy to get uh, lured into the premise of the rain mill, but don't take the take this the wrong uh, in the wrong order. First, we need something to mill, then we can pick up the rain mill. I think I'm going to go for the small farm as we have already an order that will reward us with extra grain production. So. Picking according your synergies here is always a good thing to do. So we're going to go for that. We have the fertile soil already. And here we can now go full circle and just go for a provisioner if we wanted access to the flower. But I'm, I'm going to hold back on that one. Who knows, maybe we will find a flower producing building on the next, uh, on the next clearing and the beaver houses are really, really good as well. You know, last uh, last series we practically did a uh, this was a uh, pillar of war victory. Plantation might be nice. Smokehouse might be even nice. I mean, we don't have a steady supply of these uh, foods uh, here, but it is also a very very powerful food production building. We are going to hold back on that decision, and in the meantime, the altar of decay gets torn down. We are gaining scrolls and incense. This is in so far very interesting as these materials are also materials that you can use to resolve other danger clade events. So it's a danger clade that gives us material to resolve other danger clades. What a buddy. So you also can hover over a building and just press R to rotate it. I think I never showed that in the series. What a miss. All right. Ah, well, they're not doing it as intended, but uh, I'm not going to showcase this any further because they're wasting material there. It is something that I have already successfully used on previous runs of mine. Okay, so beaver influx, deliver roots. Now, interesting versus deliver oil and deliver flour. So... Farmers can carry additional items. Very, very delighting. That's a difficult one. That's a really, really difficult one. I mean, this is easier to fulfill, but the rewards aren't as enticing. Tell you what, we're going to take that, mainly because we have a grain production, we have flour draftable, and oil can be often bought by traders. So this is pretty fulfillable. We just need to work around a wee bit. So here, this is one of the typical points where I just say, yeah, we are going, we are going to wait it out. This is an excellent uh, perk, by the way. Extra production for goods is when you want to trade top notch. As, oh yeah, we, we probably should go for that one as we are vouching into a uh, trade direction. So 
Come on, let's do this. Even if we are gaining ancient tablets later down the road, with our current setup, it might be even smarter to sell them, as we are gaining hostility reduction for every 30 amber that we're selling. That's a real powerhouse. We shouldn't sleep on that. So, on the other hand, we do need farm fields back here. Let's see. This seems to be a good place in here. So, the harvester's camp has been plucked empty. This will be now, well, we're going to keep it in the meanwhile. Until we need it. I highly doubt that we will need it. Oh, 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 check this out. So, here we have a human specialization bonus that we should absolutely um, take advantage of. It is really, really a waste because this means a chance of double yield. Double yield is extremely powerful. So, let's see. We can use the wares from this place for raw consumption, as we are not relying on the roots anymore to, to support our flower production. It's not necessary anymore, so we can chill down on that behalf. All right, so... I think that's more than enough uh, assignments for these guys. We are in the meantime racking up as much wood as is beaverly possible. This is just simply because this is a stockpile that won't go bad. You will have plenty of opportunities to fall back on that and be grateful for yourself that you have it. Basically, during times when we can safely just harvest the stuff, it's just good. Won't go bad. Wood is one of those stockpiles that you'll be never unhappy about. But you shouldn't, of course, cut down your other production lines too heavily about that. So we could easily, for example, I think it is also smarter to do that, now employ in each of these ones here one person. And let's check. So... I really feel as if a small trapper's camp down here would be excellent. So we're building that. And it is also time to set up a small warehouse back here. It's it's pretty clear that one way or another we are going to have a lot of uh, logistical movement back here. And this just makes everything so much more effective. Small warehouses, they are they are your superstars in your city. Tell you what we're going to do, we're going to set up a second worker in the crew workstation. As all these building projects, they are not that much of a pressing matter. I will put up the small farm on a higher priority though, because maybe we are able to fertilize a couple of fields before the storm hits town. Would be excellent if so. All right. In the meantime, the small foragers camp is not yielding the food that we require. You already see that we are running low on food. Low error. We're not running out of food as of yet, but it's really important to keep an eye out on that. And as you see here, we have a pretty long road ahead of us, so we still require a lot more. But I think this is a pretty stable foundation to begin with. We sadly don't have any humans now to uh, to double staff on the uh, farm here. We can unemploy the human worker here though, and put him onto the small farm. Small farm. So this guy here can do the fertilizing work during the next storm season. So we're going to have larger yields during that. The hostility level is only at one, so we're pretty well off. And we're currently still carrying away stuff from the Altar of Decay. Alright, so... It's a good opportunity to uh, to clobber open the next one of these. So we have a lot of extra building space. And we can already see the next task up ahead of us. There might be a good chance that we'll be requiring the help of a trader to fulfill the next quest. But as you see here, the impatience counter is relentlessly ticking, and we do need we do need more territory. We do need more resource. We do need to know where we can expand, and that is just what we're after. So, my good friends, I'll be leaving it at this point for today. 
I thank you a lot for watching. Episode 2, we'll be opening that bad boy and seeing where our story will lead us for this city. I have a pretty good feeling we have the basic materials already down. The drafts have been pretty generous. There's a couple of weak spots in our city as of yet. Namely, food production is a bit uh, on the weak side, but we'll see about that. and Get it sorted out along the way. I'm pretty sure about that. So thanks for watching. Comments go down below. A thumbs up would be wildly appreciated. And of course, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. There's also a couple of links down there in the description box leading to my Discord, to my Twitch, where I do streams each Sunday evening in the Middle European time zone. And last but not least, there's also PayPal, Patreon, and Buy Me a Coffee. I'd be really, really happy if you'd gave him a look. A big thanks to all of the supporters of the channel. I deeply appreciate and of course a big thanks to you watching this video until the very bitter end i also deeply appreciate hope you had a good time see you all on the next one bye bye